hello and welcome friends so far we have studied a number of different types of instruments so uh, we can write them as we have studied PMMC instruments permanent magnet moving coil instruments then we have studied electro dynamic instruments or dynamometer type instruments we have studied moving iron instruments and then we have studied electrostatic instruments okay. so far we have studied these uh, four types of instruments and So we can recall them very briefly and very quickly in a PMMC instrument we basically have a pair of magnets permanent magnets ok this is the specialty of PMMC instruments and between these two permanent magnets or the poles we have a rotatable or movable coil or moving coil ok and when, uh, when any current flows through this uh, moving coil the coil is turned due to electromagnetic torque acting on uh, uh, this current carrying conductors and this is the working principle and then uh, for electrodynamic instruments these permanent magnets are replaced by electromagnets so we have a pair of electromagnets basically a pair of coils and we call this fixed coils and between this we have a moving coil just like the PMMC instrument ok. So, this is fixed coil and this is the moving coil. Now, we have talked about different types of moving iron instruments attract, attraction type, repulsion type and the simplest possible scheme is this the attraction type moving iron instrument where we have a coil which carries the unknown current I and in front of this we have a iron bar and this iron bar can rotate around this pivot. So, if any current flows through this coil this, uh, this coil will get magnetized and it will attract the iron bar. So, this is the working principle of an attraction type moving iron instrument and in case of an electrostatic instrument what do we have? We have a plate a metallic plate conducting plate mounted around a spindle which can turn. So, this is the spindle attached with springs this can turn and then under it we will have another um, another plate below it this is fixed. So, this is attached to the frame this one cannot turn this one can turn. So, this is uh, the construction and if we now apply any voltage between these two plates so, if we apply a voltage then these two will get charged with positive and negative charges and the electrostatic force between them will try to get them closer and that is how we can measure the this voltage. So, basically these three instruments therefore, they measure current directly. So, these three instruments measures measure current directly because we need to pass some current through some coil this coil or this coil or this coil and the deflection of the pointer that will depend on 
this current. So, this instrument, this instruments measure current directly and this instrument measure voltage directly. Now, let us quickly recall the expression for the deflecting torque. So, deflecting torque T d d for deflecting. Okay. So, for PMMC instrument, we know this is given by T d is equal to B A n multiplied by I. You need not remember this formula. So, this formula is so easy uh, that you can derive it in a few seconds. So, for example, I want to find this, uh, this torque expression. So, let us see how quickly we can we do it. So, we assume this flux density to be B. So, this is the flux density B and we know this length of this coil is L, the width or diameter of the coil is D. So, the force on one conductor, so let us do it very quickly, force on one conductor, any one conductor is given by F is equal to B I L. So, this is the formula from physics we all know. Okay. And now, so this is for one conductor if we have n turns, then we will have total of B i L times n force. So, this is the total force acting on any side of the coil, this side or this side. Now, the torque will be the force multiplied by the distance d. So, put d here and then this L and d together is A. So, this becomes B A n times i. So, this is so simple. You need not remember this formula, you need not remember any formula in this subject, you can derive it in few seconds. So, that is the beauty of this subject. Okay. So, let me erase it. Okay. Now, uh, for electrodynamic instruments, we know that T d is equal to, so this will be proportional to both these currents. Okay. So, if I call this current fixed coil current as I f. So, this will be proportional to I f because more I more the value of I f is more will be the value of the flux flux density B. Okay. So, we have the term I f and then it will also depend on this current I uh, I m call this current I m in moving coil. So, I write I m so, torque is proportional to these two currents and the proportionality constant, this you may have to remember a bit. Uh, this is given by d m d theta, where m is mutual inductance between fixed and moving coil. So, uh, this is the torque expression here. For moving iron, how much is the torque? T d will be proportional to I square. Why I square? Because this is proportional to the force of attraction between this coil and the iron bar and this is proportional to the strength of this electromagnet and the strength of magnetization of this iron bar both in turn is proportional to i. So, this is proportional to i square and this the proportionality constant is given as we have not discussed this before. So, this is a new thing we are learning now. This is given by d l d theta and half. What is l? l is the self inductance of there is only one coil here this coil. So, self inductance of the coil 
okay now so okay let's uh, talk about it a bit uh, on a separate page mm. or maybe here So, observe that what is okay, what is self inductance? Self inductance L is nothing but the flux linkage of the uh, of this coil when say unit amount of current flows through this coil. So, you can write the current in the coil okay, uh, in the denominator and in the numerator we write the flux linkage generated. So, this is flux linkage per unit current flowing through the coil. Now, this flux linkage depends on the proximity or closeness of this iron bar the on the closeness of the iron bar because say when I have the coil here and the iron bar is at some distance little bit far from it then obviously uh, the flux will be less because the most of this flux has to flow through air only. Now, if I bring this iron bar close to the coil and say I bring it even partially inside the coil, then the reluctance of this uh, area is reduced because this is now partly iron, partly air and iron has lower reluctance, higher permeability. So, now we can have more flux, we will have more flux than before. So, more flux linkage. So, less flux and here more flux. So, more flux means what? For same amount of current we have more flux linkage, here for same amount of current we have lower flux linkage. So, here the inductance self inductance L will be higher than this case. So, self inductance L is therefore, the function of the distance of the iron piece or we can say uh, if this iron piece is uh, rotatable. Okay, so, this iron piece can rotate and it can come closer or further. So, we can say this self inductance L is a function of theta because theta tells us the distance or proximity of this iron bar. Okay. So, that is why L is a function of theta and we can take a derivative of L with respect to theta and this is this term which comes in this expression for deflecting torque. Okay. So, we will derive all these things very soon in this video only. And then finally, for electrostatic instruments, we, we have said yesterday that T d is equal to, in this case we are applying a voltage V. So, there is no current. So, here we will have V square, not I square. Okay? And why V square? Once again, it is very simple, because the force of attraction between the two plates is proportional to the charge. in each plate okay, because T d is proportional to Q square. If this is if this is Q and this is minus Q, then T d is proportional to Q square and Q is proportional to V okay, if when the capacitance is constant. So, then we can write T d is proportional to V square and the constant of proportionality is given by 
dc d theta in this case we are talking about capacitance and in these two cases we are talking about inductance here we have only one coil so we are talking about self inductance here we have two coils we are talking about the mutual inductance between them and one more thing which uh, we often get confused uh, is that note that there is a term half here half here and there is no half here okay so this is these are the torque expressions expressions for deflecting torque for the four types of instruments we have studied so far this we have proved this is very simple this three we have been proved in this video we are going to prove this three uh, expressions okay so before we begin so this is going to be a long tutorial we will have we have to do three derivations this will be a slightly longer uh, uh, video uh, however if you are not interested or if you do not need the derivation you can skip uh, the remaining part of the video from now okay so let us now start uh, with the derivation of td that means deflecting torque for electrostatic instruments i am starting with electrostatic instruments particularly because this derivation many of you might have already seen maybe in school okay so let me uh, let me draw it quickly so i have a spindle i have a pair of uh, so one plate here which is not connected to the spindle another plate uh, maybe below it uh, and this one is connected to the spindle this can rotate this can not rotate this is fixed and their size is normally same although my diagram is not that good their size looks different and we have this one connected rigidly to the frame of the instrument this is fixed this is movable okay now if we apply, as we have already said if we apply a voltage between these two plus minus okay and then we will have some charge positive charge q here then negative charge q here okay now once this uh, and and uh, the moment when this charging is happening i i will hold this okay so i will hold this maybe by hand imagine that i'm holding it by hand okay my drawing is not that good uh, but imagine i am holding this so that this plate cannot move hold it when the plates are charged okay this is you have to do you have to hold it uh, when the plates are being charged now once this charging is over it will not take much time it then then disconnect this mm. okay so i have a switch so i can disconnect this so step 2 disconnect 
the circuit after charging. So now, what will happen? The charge which is already accumulated plus and minus Q that cannot change because the circuit is now broken. So, this charge cannot change anymore. So, this plus Q charge will remain here and minus Q charge will remain here. So, after after this connection, plus Q and minus Q charges cannot change anymore. because there is no path for this charge to flow. Okay. Now, after this, so now this is disconnected, but now observe that there will be a force of attraction force of attraction between, so this is point 3, there will be a force of attraction be between the two plates, which means a torque will act on the movable coil. So, a torque will act on the movable, I mean movable plate not coil. So, now let us call this torque, call this torque as T d. Okay. So, the question is T d is equal to how much? Okay, how much will be the value of T d? To find the value of T d, we will use the principle of conservation of energy, very simple. Now, assume that, okay, and, and uh, so also, uh, so there is a, there is a torque which is acting on this plate, which is trying to rotate this plate. Okay. Now, so what I have to do, I have to to hold this plate at its position, I have to actually apply equal and opposite uh, amount of torque, then only it can stay uh, here without moving. Okay? So, uh, when it is not moving, the torque that I am applying is also T d. Now, assume that I loosen my hand a bit, slightly uh, loose, loosen my hand, so that my torque is slightly less and then uh, this plate will uh, move towards the other plate. Okay. Say this plate is moved by a small distance d theta. Okay. Assume the plate is moved by a small distance d theta. Okay angular, I mean angular distance of course. So, how much is the work uh, done in this process? So, work done okay, in this process will be torque T d multiplied by d theta, torque times displacement. So, this is work done. Now, where does this work come from? We know to do some work or to get some work, we need to spend some energy. Okay. So, where does it come from? Where does this work come from? Note that the, the amount of electrostatic energy stored in the parallel plate capacitor 
electrostatic energy energy stored this is given by half cv square we all know this okay now now we can write uh, you know c is equal to q by v so v is equal to q by c so we can write half c uh, q square by c square so this is then equal to uh, c one c one c cancels so we have one q square by c now this is the energy stored in the parallel plates c is in the denominator so that means if c increases then stored energy decreases right if c increases c is in the denominator downstairs so if c increases the stored energy will decrease now see when this plate is moved towards the other plate the overlapping area between them increases that means capacitance c increases and if capacitance is increasing then the stored energy will decrease that means this is the energy which is spent to do this work okay so this work done is done by spending this stored energy okay now uh, when the movable coil comes closer to the fixed coil i mean sorry i mean plate please forgive me if i am uh, doing this mistake again and again when the movable plate comes closer to the fixed plate overlapping area increases that means c increases that means stored energy decreases now how much is the change in stored energy when this plate is moved by an angle of theta the change in stored energy stored electrostatic energy we can write this as uh, the rate of change of the stored energy with respect to theta so this is stored in this is stored energy and this is the rate of change of the stored energy multiplied by d theta will be the total change of the stored energy right so this is the total change of stored energy and this we can write if we differentiate okay so we write it as uh, let's take a derivative of it so here you, you know q is constant okay voltage need not be constant voltage may change but q is constant why q is constant because we have disconnected the circuit now even if the plates move uh, the charge q is not going to change so q is a constant half is a constant take them out q square by 2 now here inside i have 1 over c derivative of 1 over c is minus 1 by c square okay so this is the uh, derivative of c with this uh, 1 over c with respect to c multiplied by dc d theta 
So, this is the derivative of this term and then multiplied by d theta. So, this is the change in stored energy okay? and this is with a negative sign indicating that the energy is decreasing because capacitance is increasing and we know that it is in the denominator if capacitance increases stored energy decreases. So, this is the amount of decrease of stored energy and this must be equal to the work done from the conservation of work and energy. Now, from the conservation of work and energy, we can write that this work done which is this should be equal to this this change in uh, stored energy. So, let us write work done T d times d theta this will be equal to this q square by 2 c square d c d theta into d theta. Okay. minus sign I am ignoring because this means my this minus means it is a decrease in the energy. So, I am just taking the actual, actual absolute value of or the amount of decrease. So, this amount of decrease will be same of, of uh, to with the amount of work done. Okay. So, this I can write uh, now I can cancel this d theta on both sides and then q square by c square. So, I can write that this I have q square by c square and the half half is here and q square by c square is this square and then this is d c d theta. So, this is the expression for torque which we have written before and now we are proving it. Okay. So, this is the derivation for the expression of deflecting torque in an electrostatic instrument. Okay. Now, next task is, so next we will do two more derivations, derivation for uh, deflecting torque in electro, uh, sorry electrodynamic we will do later, before that we will do moving iron and then electrodynamic. So, two more derivations we will do in this video. So, derivation of electro, no, uh, derivation of uh, T d deflecting torque in first moving iron instrument. So, we will take the simplest one which is a attraction type moving iron instrument which has a coil which carries a current I unknown current I that we want to measure. In front of it we have a iron piece which can rotate around some uh, pivot and so this is iron or any magnetic material in principle it can be and this can rotate it can come closer or further depending on whether the spring is stronger or this electromagnetic force is stronger. So, this is the scheme. So, let us take or consider this scheme. Similar derivation can also be done uh, assuming uh, repulsion type instrument uh, or other types of uh, other variants of this moving iron instrument, but this is simplest to do. So, that is why I have chosen this. So, now when some current is flowing, Okay. So, for this current to flow, let me uh, attach a current source. Okay. So, this is a current source. What is the function of a current source? The function of the current source is to keep this current I constant. No matter what happens, an ideal current source is supposed to keep this current always constant and for that it can apply 
any amount of voltage, any amount of potential difference it can generate which is required at any moment to keep this current at the same value of I. So that's the function of this current source. Okay. So I is constant. Okay. Like in the previous derivation we had stored in a uh, charge constant in this, in this derivation we will use the idea that the current I is constant but the voltage here so if I call the voltage between this uh, two So this is a current source and the voltage between these two points I am calling it as V between these two points across the current source. This side I am taking as my positive reference, this side as my negative reference. Okay. This can vary, this can vary with time but current I cannot vary. Now what happens? when a current flows this will apply some force or a torque which will try to rotate this iron bar towards the left so this is the torque td this is the direction of the torque and let's forget the spring for now okay once uh, once again let's assume that this uh, iron piece moves by an angle of d theta. Okay, so say this is moved by an angle of a small angle of d theta. Okay, so if so, then work done in moving the iron piece is given by the torque multiplied by the angle td d theta. So, this is the work done. So, some work is being done. Once again the question is who does this work or where does this the required energy come from. Now, if this is moved by an angle of d theta. So, iron bar comes closer to the coil. Now, what will happen? Self inductance L will increase. Why? Because the iron is coming closer to the coil. So, the reluctance of the flux path is being reduced, more flux can be produced with the same amount of current. So, L will now increase. Okay. And if L increases, then the stored electromagnetic energy also has to change. And we know that the stored electromagnetic energy magnetic energy is given by half L I square. Here I is a constant because we have uh, connected a current source, but this L increases as the iron bar comes closer. Okay. So, the L increases and I is constant. So, the change in We can write the change in stored electromagnetic energy is given by, so this is the expression for energy. Okay. Let us take a derivative that means this is the rate of change of energy with uh, as a function of theta and so here L is a function of theta.
okay so this is the rate of change of energy as a function of theta multiplied by the change of theta so this is the total change in uh, stored electromagnetic energy okay and now is this energy increasing or decreasing this is increasing because this is the expression for stored energy l is increasing because the iron bar is coming closer so l is increasing so stored energy is increasing so stored energy is increasing now we are in a surprise the stored energy is increasing and yet some work is done in moving this iron bar so where is this energy coming from because stored energy is not decreasing so we cannot say this work done is done at the expense of stored energy because stored energy itself is also increasing so we have a increase of energy stored energy as well as some work done so there must be there must be some other source of energy transfer which is supplying both this energy can we recognize what is that source that source is this because observe okay so let me first write a, a surprising thing surprise stored energy is increased and work is also done so who supplies all the required energies now note that when the iron piece is moving then l is increasing so flux linkage is also increasing so there must be some emf induced across the coil okay because we know according to faraday's law if flux linkage is changing then there must be some emf induced across this coil and this emf we are calling it v the value of this is uh, this emf you are calling it v and then this current source has to deliver current against this induced emf because this induced emf according to lenz's law will always try to oppose this current mm, maybe lenz's law is not uh, okay that easy to see here uh, but okay we can always show we can always show that this voltage will act in a direction such that it is trying to oppose this current okay we can show that it's not very difficult therefore this current source has to deliver some energy in the process of supplying this current against the induced emf so the current source has to supply some energy okay to deliver current against induced emf okay so we are calling this emf as v this current is i so now we know power is given by v times i so this is the expression for power in general 
okay power is always voltage times current v i and so therefore uh, and then this v in this case is given by the rate of change of flux linkage so we can write this as d d t of flux linkage flux linkage is nothing but l times i okay so this is the flux linkage inductance multiplied by i where this inductance is a function of theta Okay, so this is the expression for power, sorry, voltage, this multiplied by I. Now, we know I is a constant, L is increasing, but I is constant. So, this we can write as, we take this I outside and we have another I, so we have a I square, then D D T of L theta. Okay. And then this we can again write as I square d d theta of L theta multiplied by d theta dt. This is the chain rule of derivative. Okay. So, this is the expression of power. If so, then the energy we can multiply it by some time this, the delta t this is the time, this is the time within which the uh, iron bar is moved by an angle theta. So, dt, so dt, let me write here, dt is the time in which iron bar moves uh, through the angle d theta. Okay. So, then the energy will be simply d d this multiplied by d t d t d t cancels so this is the energy supplied by the current source Now, let me complete the derivation here after this. Okay. So, now we will equate the energies on work done. So, this is the energy supplied by the current source. So, energy supplied by current source. this should be equal to the work done in moving the iron bar plus the increase in stored electromagnetic energy. Okay. Now, let us put the values. For this, we put this I square d d theta L theta d theta work done is given by it is here t d times d theta. Okay. So, work done is this t d d theta and this change in electromagnetic energy is here. So, let us put that value. So, that is how much? It is half d d half i square d d theta of L theta. So, half i square d d theta of uh, L theta times d theta. Okay. Now, all this d theta you can cancel okay. and then this two term you see that this is we have here i square d l d theta and here half i square d l d theta. So, this is 
so this two will cancel i mean not cancel half half of it will cancel so we will have half i square d d theta of l theta is given by t d is is equal to t d and this is the expression for the torque which we have stated before we have also stated the meaning of this expression but in this video we are doing the derivation okay so this is also done now the last thing that remains is the derivation for torque for electrodynamic instruments and once again you can expect you can guess that we are going to use the same strategy of energy conservation so you may try it yourself before looking at the remaining part of this video or you may look at the remaining part of the video so the next thing is derivation of td in electro uh, dynamic instrument okay so what do you have in an electrodynamic instruments we have two coils two sets or uh, two sets of coils one a uh, fixed coil set of fixed coils and between this we have um, a moving coil see i draw it at some arbitrary angle the current in the fixed coil we call it if the current in the moving coil we call it im okay now let me connect both this to to current sources so that this currents remain constant so i have two current sources delivering two currents in uh, uh, through moving and the fixed coils now um, let's recap a bit a and then uh, say uh, that the torque which is acting on uh, this coil is td and once again may let's make this similar assumption that due to this torque td this coil is moved or turned by a small angle d theta okay so so work done will be td d theta okay okay now what is the stored energy expression for stored energy for a pair of coil for a pair of coils the total electromagnetic energy stored in them is given by so let me write the expression half l1 let me call it l f1 that means fixed coil l f i f squared this is the energy due to the self inductance of the fixed coil plus half l m i m squared plus we have another additional term m i f i m so this is the expression for stored energy okay now in this expression which are the terms 
that are constant i m i f are constants why because they are being supplied by const constant current sources so these are constants ill if and ill m the self inductances they depend on the coils themselves they are say they are uh, uh, proximity with respect to some other uh, magnetic material etc these terms are not changing okay because uh, although this uh, moving coil is moving uh, but its self inductance is not going to change at least if some other nearby magnetic material is not there then this ill m and ill f they are also constants but m is variable m is a function of theta the angle between i mean the angle angular position of this coil with respect to some difference why this is a function of theta because so let's see once again let me recap say if i have the fixed coils like this it is generating some flux okay and let this flux density be b in uh, any uh, left to right or right to left direction uh, not so important now and let me draw the moving coil like i used to do it earlier like this and this is one side of the coil and this is another side of the coil okay so th this side is perpendicular to this plane of paper and this side is also perpendicular to this plane of paper now what is the flux linkage the flux linkage is the amount of flux that goes through the coil which crosses the coil okay now if i have this coil at say uh, this orientation like this then a lot of flux can go through it okay but if i have this coil in uh, perpendicular orientation then all flux lines slide or glide across the coil they do not go through do they do not in uh, go through the coil okay so here we have less flux linkage so we have so here we can say the flux linkage of the moving coil due to some amount of current in the fixed coil is lower compared to the flux linkage in the moving coil due to the same amount of current in the fixed coil here it is higher so here m is higher here m is lower okay so m is therefore the a function of the angle or angular position of this coil okay now if this coil moves by an angle theta d theta as we have assumed so the amount of uh, change in the stored energy change in stored energy will be so let me uh, for ease of writing let me call this as es es for energy stored so change in stored energy will again we can write this as the rate of change of the energy multiplied by the change of theta now here we know i m constant i f constant l f m constant so all these terms are constants okay so all these terms so this is constant therefore 
uh, if we take the derivative, the derivative can be taken only with respect to this term. Okay. So, therefore, we can write this will be equal to d d theta of only the last term m, I am writing it as a function of theta m theta i m i f multiplied by d theta. I can take out i m and i f as they are not function of theta, they are constants, then I have d m theta by d theta multiplied by d theta. This is the change in the stored energy. Okay. Now, is the stored energy going to increase or decrease? It is going to increase because, because we know that uh, when currents flow through these coils, so they will generate some polarities like maybe say, say this is uh, north, this is south, this is north, this is south. Okay. And if uh, here I have south and this north for the moving coil, then we know the these two will attract each other and therefore, they will try to get aligned. Basically, all magnets try to get aligned due to their um, force, the forces between them. So, the coil, this coil will come to so, it will rotate like this and this will become aligned. So, after the rotation, the moving coil will come to this position. That means, so this is same as this position because now the flux lines can all pass through the turns of the moving coil. So, mutual inductance M is increasing. Okay? So, m increases if this coil is pulled, this moving coil is pulled towards the magnetic field of fixed coil, m increases. So, m is increasing as moving coil is aligned or pulled towards the field of fixed coil, okay, m is increasing. So, E s will also increase because this is proportional to m is also increasing. So, once again we have the same surprise here. E s is increasing and work some additional work is also done. Okay. So, where does this energy come from? Where does this energy come from? This must come from once again through this current sources. Why? Because when this moving coil is getting moved, m is changed. If m is changed, then flux linkage will also change. Okay? And if flux linkage is changed, some EMF will be generated across this. So, let us call this some EMF which we can generate here as uh, V m and this EMF as if any EMF is generated here, of course, there will be some EMF generated here call that V f because m is changing. If m is changing, then flux linkage of both the, these coils will change which will generate this voltages. Okay. So, energy, let us find the energy supplied by 
okay let let me call uh, this two sources uh okay, let me uh copy it and i this Mm. Okay, let me do it this way. Uh, so the energy supplied by, say, this source, call this source uh, S F, source F by S F. This will be equal to power V. Times i, so Vf, If, this is power multiplied by dt. What is dt? dt is the time in which this coil is moved by an angle d theta. Okay, so this is like the energy, and this we can write as so in place of Vf, I write d dt of the flux linkage that uh, that changes so flux linkage of the fixed coil is due to the uh, due, due to the current in the uh, moving coil is given as m i m okay so this 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 is the flux linkage due to um, the moving coil current and the mutual inductance so this is this is same as v then i multiply it with if then i multiply it with dt then this i can write as i take out this im as constant so i write it as im if ddt of m theta so this ddt i can write as dd theta applying chain rule of m theta multiplied by d theta dt and then this dt okay this dt this dt cancels okay so this is the energy supplied by sf similarly the energy supplied by s m this we can write as v m i m d t which will be equal to d d t of m theta i f flux linkage rate of change of flux linkage that's the voltage and then i have the current so this becomes the power then time this is the energy then this can be written as i m i f outside and then this will become uh, after some manipulation just like this so this is the total energy supplied okay so now we write total energy supplied should be equal to the work done plus the increase in stored energy okay now total energy supplied is this plus this so see these two are actually same these two are actually same so i can write two times of this so i write 2 i m i f d m d theta multiplied by d theta this is same as the work done plus the increase in internal energy which is this okay now all this d theta cancels and then you see that i have two times im if dm d theta 
here only one IMIF DM D theta. So I can cancel one of them from it from both sides and then I can write this T D will be equal to one of this terms I M I F D M D theta. This is what we already have seen before. Okay. So, that was the derivation for uh, uh, torque in electrodynamic instruments. So, uh, let us conclude this video by saying that uh, all these derivations are very interesting, very uh, uh, nice particularly for uh, those uh, who love uh, um, physics a bit, for them this will be very interesting that is why we have done this. Uh, but for uh, solving problems for exams, etc. Maybe this data, particularly maybe for our exam, which we will have at the end of this course, this long derivations may not be that important. What will be more important is this end results, because this is what one, an engineer may need to apply again and again in his regular practice. But the beauty of understanding this derivation is that once you know the underlying physics, you can apply the same idea, the same knowledge in, find, in, find, in different um, similar uh, topics and you can expand your uh, or uh, our uh, domain of knowledge in this way. So, you can apply this idea and solve more complicated problems uh, in, in similar or related uh, uh, topics. Thank you. This was a long video. Thanks for uh, staying with us.